It's been over a year now since we had this amazing headset available in the market. And throughout those months, Oculus has been rolling out a lot of amazing updates that gave this VR headset more features, more innovations, and some updates on their policies, which I wish I'd known from the very beginning. So in today's video, as a proud owner of this VR headset, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you all the tips and tricks that there is to know so in case you just recently got your hands on your own VR headset recently, here's everything there is to know about this headset. Let's go ahead and get started. So one of the best things about the Oculus Quest headset is that the IPD slider is actually located underneath the headset itself, which means there's no need to go into the settings to digitally adjust this. Right here, it's easy to access, anybody could do it and adjust it to their preference. Now, in case you're unaware about what size, what measurement is the right measurement for you, instead of doing it the old fashioned way where you take like a ruler or something and take a couple minutes to measure everything out, there actually are third party apps that will actually utilize the hardware that some phones already have, like iPhones for instance with their face ID. So this application as a defined example will automatically scan your face and will digitally measure everything accurately so it gives you your IPD measurement right there. This app is free to download and I highly recommend everybody to do this because this entire time I was playing at a totally different number and now everything is super clear. Now when drawing your guardian, there's a couple of new tools that got added to the Oculus Quest. The first one being that you could go back and edit. So if you messed up, you could always expand it or redraw it to start all over. But that's not what I wanna go ahead and show you. Now that cameras can detect if there are certain objects in the way by giving you a bunch of these weird red dots. So if it's a furniture you can move out of the way, you could do that. Or you could just hit redraw and start the process over again. But now let's say you're one of the few lucky folks that actually have access to a giant canvas, like a giant warehouse filled with nothing and you wanted to have the guardian disabled. Well, you can. And the process is really easy. By having the Guardian completely disabled, you're able to walk around freely and across all the different Oculus environments. And not only that, you can also do the exact same thing in the game. Now, in order to do this and unlock this mode, you have to register your device into a developer organization, which is free and it's really easy to do, trust me. Now you could do this on your phone or the computer for the first part, because for the first part, you are gonna have to go on this Oculus part of the website and you are going to be required to log in. As soon as you log in, you are required to create an organization. This could be anything. You can literally type in gibberish and just hit accept. As long as you're signed into the same account that's linked to your Oculus Quest, you're good. Now for this next part, all you have to do is launch the application on your tablet or smartphone, whatever device is paired to your headset, hit the gear icon and tap on the headset, wait a few seconds and then go to the more settings. And right here, you should see developer mode. In here, enable this, and now you're set. And now just go into your VR headset, go into the settings, and then you should see this developer tab right here. Click on this, just disable guardian, and that's practically it. Now, one thing I should also mention, when you have your Oculus in developer mode, it blocks the ability to for you to export files from the headset to your PC. So if you'd like to transfer your screenshots or your video recordings you have recorded, you need to disable developer mode and then it will allow your computer to transfer those files again. Now, just in case you have noticed that my menu may look slightly different in yours, that's because I'm using the latest redesigned menu UI. As long as you're on the latest firmware update, which is version 18 or newer, you have access to this. So if you wanna quickly enable this from this menu, simply just go into your Oculus settings and tap on the experimental features. And right underneath experimental features, you're gonna see something that says the new universal menu. Just go ahead and enable this and it's gonna prompt you and ask you to reset the headset in order to do this change. Let it reset, wait a few seconds, and there's your new menu. Of course, you can always reverse it in case you don't like the new redesign menu. So some of these next features what previously started as a beta is now native to the Oculus Quest, such as now in the web browser, you're able to have three different windows open at the same time. Well, browsers, but you can multitask as you please. And it's really cool whenever you 
enter this mode into a R mode with the pass through environment, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And if you'd like to take a screenshot in a game, on a menu, or anywhere on the Oculus Quest, instead of actually having to go into the menu and actually select screenshot, did you know by simply holding down the Oculus button on the controller and tapping either the joystick or the trigger button will take a screenshot. That's a quick awesome shortcut that everybody should at least know. You can also do the same thing with the voice command. Now whenever you double tap the home button, the new Oculus Virtual Voice Assistant should pop up. If you haven't set it up yet, you're going to get a pop-up window walking you through how to set it up. But it's really easy and the commands are really incredible. By double tapping the Oculus button, if you ask the Virtual Voice Assistant to record, it'll record whatever you're trying to record. You can also request to open up certain apps like Google or Beat Saver as an example. And then not only that, you can also tell it to shut down. Instead of manually having to hold down the power button and select power off, it's quicker, I found, if you just use the Virtual Voice Assistant and just tell it to shut down the Oculus headset. Other cool tools to also be aware of is back on the web browser of the Oculus Quest. Down below, there's also web browser VR games that you can actually play on the VR headset. So some of these games are actually really fun and plays surprisingly really well and the graphics don't look that bad either. Now it's not installed to the Oculus Quest so this does rely on your broad broadband but based from my experience, gameplay plays really smoothly. There's this one, there's also this Beat Saber style game and there's just plenty of more to select from. So if you're bored and you have no idea what to play, you can always just browse the web browser and find something fun. And then some creative way to really personalize your VR headset is if you hop on to your settings and you're in the Guardian selection, you can actually change the color of your Guardian. You have these three base colors to choose from. You have the traditional default blue, you got pink, and you also got yellow. Other things you can play with, if you go into the experimental features, you can enable pass-through mode. With this mode enabled, basically whenever you tap the side of your VR headset, it's gonna switch to the black and white external camera so you can see your surroundings. I love ena enabling this feature whenever I have to reach around or grab something like a glass of water while I'm playing a game, or maybe if somebody's talking to me, I can like look at them right away. And surprisingly, it works really well. It's still in the beta though. Then other creative way to really personalize your Oculus headset is in, located in the virtual environment tab. You have these five different virtual environments to play with, but the most unique one is the pass-through mode. The pass-through mode basically will give you an AR environment. Like you're able to see your menu and everything in the real world at the same time. So if you're doing a lot of like web browsing work, I mean, this will definitely give you a futuristic vibe. Another forgettable tip is don't forget to clean your external camera lens. I mean, I see a lot of people just focus on the internal lens, which is perfectly fine using a microfiber cloth, but it's always good to clean up the external cameras, especially now that hand tracking support is now enabled natively. It's no longer in a beta. Now, in case you're not sure how to use hand tracking, you can always hop into your applications and just look for this app right here. But to show you the quick rundown, it's basically this. There's only three major controls. The first one by pinching with your index finger and your thumb like so allows you to select certain things. And then if you pinch and hold and scroll, like do a little scrolling thing, you can also navigate through the menu this way as well. Facing the palm, facing you, you will see your hand highlighted blue. When it's highlighted blue, you can now connect your index finger with your thumb and this will bring up the Oculus menu by simply holding it for a couple of seconds. That's basically the quick rundown. So yeah, after this update, I mean, you really don't need controllers to operate this VR headset anymore. You can just use your hands. Now, the ability to cast. As long as you're, you have a third generation Google Chromecast or even a Chromecast Ultra, you're able to cast the VR headset to the television by simply just going into the share icon and then select cast, select a Chromecast under the same network that's connected to your VR headset and you could cast it to the screen just like that. You may also control this by using the app for the Oculus headset. 
by simply tapping on the little cast icon above you could either cast it to a Chromecast or select it to your phone or tablet as long as the application is installed and it's also logged in with the same account as your Oculus Quest. But casting your gameplay to a television has been significantly improved compared to the first generation of this. It's no longer in beta. It actually supports sound as well. But casting it to a television or a tablet like this or on your phone as an example is perfect, especially when you have a newbie that you're trying to introduce to VR for the first time. You want to help them and walk them through. This way their experience is actually positive. Now even though the gaming library of the Oculus Quest continues to grow, once in a while you will run into a bad game. If you accidentally download a bad game and you want to request for a refund, it's really easy and this is something I wish I knew from the very beginning. On the Oculus app, if you go into your settings and just scroll down where you see purchase history, select the game that you want to refund for and you can literally tap right there, request refund. Now Oculus return policy is this. As long as you purchase a game within the 14 days and you played no more than just two hours, you will qualify for the automatic refund. Now upon further research on the return policy, if you're experiencing bugs and you're past the return period, you can try to get a hold of customer service and hopefully be able to refund you. Now you may have not realized this, but some of the games that you may have already owned for the Oculus Quest is compatible for Oculus Link because if you check on some of these games underneath, it says Rift. So once you purchase this game, you can re-download it for the Rift side. And if you're using something like the Oculus Link, you could download the desktop version of that VR game and play it on your Oculus Quest using Oculus Link. And if you want to play some of your Steam VR games as a fine example, I highly recommend looking into purchasing the virtual desktop app. Now by itself, the virtual desktop will allow you to control your PC with your Oculus Quest and now there actually is hand tracking support as well. But in order to play Steam VR games with your Oculus Quest, you need to install the add-on that you could download using SideQuest. Now if you haven't downloaded or played with SideQuest yet, I highly recommend to do so. I've been using SideQuest for over a year now. It doesn't do any harm to the VR headset, nor does it avoid your warranty. The Oculus Quest development team is fully aware about SideQuest. They haven't done anything to like block or anything like that. In fact, they're fully supported from what it looks like because this is an awesome tool for developers. Now there's many videos out there on YouTube showing you full tutorials how to get side quests working with your Oculus Quest. So I'm gonna go ahead and link the one that helped me out in the video description down below. But by doing this, you also unlock new additional features as well. Like take for instance, the Oculus Quest is actually running a modified version of Android. And you could actually restore some of its Android features like the setting menu where you can actually pair up Bluetooth headphones to your VR. The process is really easy. I'll also include a link to the video that I followed to help you unlock this feature. But besides that, the Oculus Quest is an amazing headset. The only drawback though, is that unfortunately it takes regular AA batteries, which is why I would highly advise investing in some rechargeable AA batteries. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run. And if you like to play your VR headset in a dark room, you can pick up one of these LiDAR illuminators. This is invisible to the naked eye, but if you look through the Oculus with the pass-through mode and you see what it sees, you see that the IR illuminator illuminates the entire room, almost like as if there's a flashlight in the room. Now playing like this is really awesome because it really does give you a more immersive feel since there's no light leaking in in your headset. So highly recommend picking up this accessory. And lastly, in case you did recently just pick up your VR headset and you ignored all the warning signs, don't expose the lens or the VR headset in general to any sunlight. This may cause harms to the lens because these OLED displays are known to get damaged from even the smallest sunlight beam. So I don't recommend doing that. And even if you manage to somehow safely equip the headset outdoors, don't even bother because in direct sunlight, the cameras are gonna have a hard time tracking the controllers. And those are my favorite tips and tricks about the Oculus Quest. If you have some tips or some tricks that you wanna suggest so that everybody else can also see, feel free to comment that down below. If you like to see more stuff, maybe some awesome accessories, go ahead and check out this video over here as I go through my 
favorite accessories for my Oculus Quest, including the accessories you see on right now. And then that video over there, that is just a video that YouTube is suggesting specifically for you. They believe you're gonna like it, so feel free to watch that or this one. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.